Welcome everybody out there in virtual land. Um, this is John Dupuy and what I'm doing here is, is creating a series of uh, 10 or 15 minute video clips that I can put on the Integral uh, Recovery website because I think if I'm able to talk about it and put it out there um, you'll be able to maybe grasp it better than some of my more uh, drier academic papers that are on the website and the books uh, coming out soon but in the meantime this would be a good way for uh, to get these ideas out there and uh, get the discussion going so I'm very interested in any feedback that you have that is not negative not feedback too but um, uh, so we can start collaborating in this because basically anybody who shows up uh, to be part of integral recovery at this point is is a pioneer because it's so bloody new and exciting I think so off camera here we have Anshin who's a uh, friend that I just met at our meditation group uh, on Sunday this is Monday mm -hmm. and she's a very intelligent bright young woman but doesn't know diddly squat about uh, integral recovery or the aqua map so it's really nice to have somebody who who's not acquainted with it so I can and start as if I'm starting with somebody from from the very basics so uh, hi Anjan Hello. So any anytime you have questions, she will be uh, the surrogate for the rest of you guys, and uh, um, her questions will will be covered by me. So first of all, maybe we start with the definition of what is integral recovery, and and perhaps before that, I can talk about why I uh, developed integral recovery and, and what what the whole uh, kind of the brief history of it is, and I had worked. Uh, professionally for, for almost two decades in the wilderness, uh, therapeutic wilderness industry. And uh, Aspen Achievement Academy, the first uh, program I worked at was the Salesmanship Club Boys Camp in uh, East Texas out of Dallas and it was the first therapeutic wilderness program in the country. started back in the 40s and I cut my wilderness teeth there. Later I went on to uh, the Bay Area, I went to graduate school, studied transpersonal psychology at J JFK University. And uh, while I was going to school, I worked as a therapist and counselor at uh, an addiction treatment center for adolescents called Thunder Road. Uh, a, a very good, uh, was as good as they got back then, I believe. And I became acquainted with the 12 steps and the disease of addiction and what was currently being done. Later on, we moved with my now wife, of whom I met in graduate school, to, to uh, Utah, southern Utah, because of the call of the wild and, and the gorgeousness of it all. And we began to work in the therapeutic wilderness industry. And very, this was 1994 that we, we came out here. And um, very soon it became apparent to me that the major uh, presenting problem of the majority of our students which the data says now is 85 to 90 percent of the people were showing up for these programs was the main presenting problem was drugs and alcohol. And uh, I was not satisfied with the level of, of treatment that um, um, our students were, were um, receiving. And I found that often it was very difficult to get people interested in uh, dealing with uh, addiction at a wilderness program. And I think one of the problems was is that that since uh, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous was written in 1939, there's been a real division between AA and all NA and all its associated groups, which is kind of a uh, um, a, cons uh, a religious, uh, spiritual, in some ways even even uh, fundamentalist type of organization where you have the holy book and you have the prophet Bill W. Dr. Bob. And there's one way of doing things. They distrust experts and it's its own thing. And then you have the therapeutic and the medical world and law enforcement over here. And uh, interestingly enough, even to this day, uh, addiction and, and chemical dependency being our number one healthcare problem. Wow. Uh, our number one reason that people are in prison, 80% of the people in our prisons, which we have the largest population in the United States of any uh, country in the world that are imprisoned, are there because of drugs, drugs and alcohol. And I uh, really recommend the book um, High Society by Joseph Califano Jr., who was a um, uh, HEW Health Education and Welfare uh, Secretary under Jimmy Carter who wrote this book and he's associated with CASA which is the Columbia School of Addiction Studies and he puts it all together and basically 
uh, the problems and the associated problems from alcoholism, tobacco, uh, legal and illegal drugs runs into the trillions of dollars every year in our economy and that's liver disease, heart disease, cancer, crime, abuse, children, uh, drug treatment, uh, uh, the the criminal justice system, on and on, it's huge. And nobody's really ever put it together in such a, a compelling way as Joseph Califano did in this book. And if you go to my website under the library, you can click on that, uh, the icon of the book, it'll take it to Amazon, order it. It's short, but it's very, very compelling and very well researched. So, it's a huge problem, but amazingly enough, when I went to graduate school to learn how to be a therapist, there was no, uh, we barely learned anything, if anything, I can't remember learning anything, about addiction. And that is true in, uh, even to this day, and this was in the early 80s that we went to graduate school, that, that uh, in the schools that I've, I've talked to and the people, uh, young people that are coming out of uh, graduate programs today, they're not learning anything about addiction. It's so strange. This goes for medical schools too. They make it a uh, three or four or five hour lecture, which is not graded. <laughs> And as business as they are, they don't learn anything about it. So up till now, it seems that a recovery expert is someone who has um, achieved some time of sobriety, normally uh, uh, through AA or NA or another 12-step program. And that's great. That's a great perspective and it's very useful. But that's like saying that somebody has had a uh, you know, brain surgery done on their head is, a, is qualified to be a brain surgeon. I mean, it's, it's just not quite enough. And so I was very struck that it was just um, we our, our healthcare providers and professionals were not being uh, taught uh, about addiction and this huge disease. And I, I, I saw students die. I saw families disrupted. I saw the pain and suffering. I saw the uh, the problems in the inner cities uh, with with poverty and, and violence and all of these the all of these 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 complexes and all these things related to drugs and nothing really being done except to send people to jail and say oh go to AA, and it's simply not enough. So I became very um, uh, motivated in my soul to see if I could do something about this. And that led me to beginning a program called Passages to Recovery here in um, Wayne County, Utah, which was the first adult therapeutic wilderness program that really exclusively and upfront focused on um, the treatment of, of, of alcohol and uh, alcoholism and chemical dependency. And um, what I knew at that point, I knew the 12 steps, I knew wilderness therapy, I knew uh, Native American um, spiritual practices such as <clears throat> vision questing, I knew a little bit about meditation, uh, I knew about sweat lodges, and so I put this all together into a, a wilderness program, and it was really a great wilderness program. It was pretty amazing, and most of the, the students, when they graduated the program, after six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks, however long they were there, and we asked them what the most um, impactful and, and uh, uh, important part of the program to them, and they almost, nine out of ten times, just said it was a spirituality. So we developed a spirituality that was very invitational. It wasn't dogmatic. It wasn't us trying to push our... our um, our version of spirituality, but allowing people to to look inside and the, through the experience of the wilderness, to um, to and the twelve steps and the meditation, sweat lodges, vision questing, etc., to explore their own spirituality and to try to come to a different relationship with with the disease that had been uh, wrecking their lives. And it was a very good program, but there is a problem about even the best treatment programs. That if you, in other words, if I take somebody in the wilderness, I've been doing this long enough. I know, and that the, the powerful, beautiful, sacred land out here, if I take you out there for eight weeks, I don't know, care who you are, you're going to have a very powerful uh, awakening experience in most cases. Uh, the problem is when you leave the container of the wilderness and, or the treatment program, you go back into your world, um, you often the light fades and you're right back where you started and the cravings uh, come back and uh, you relapse and, and the disease continues on. So that was a real problem. And, uh, uh, and normally, uh, back then, we would try to get people into, into another uh, um, secondary treatment program after a primary treatment, or send them home and tell them to go to the 12-step meetings to get a sponsor. And it's all, all very well and good, but it simply doesn't work that often for that many people. And, and it's kind of hard to come up with the, um, 
how effective AA is because it kind of resists uh, being researched by scientists, but the best numbers that we can come up with are 10 to 15 percent of the people make it through the first year and after that it decreases to about five percent so it's really really not very good and, and uh, I don't mean to to um, anger or piss off any any AAers out there because I truly honor AA and Bill W and, and what the pioneers did they saved millions of lives problem is it's just not effective enough uh, we need to do better and the big book of AA was written in 1939 and uh, we've learned a lot about the human brain, about the disease of addiction, and about a lot of things since 1939. So I think we can really update the model and uh, do a lot better. And that was the the um, the ground from which this this integral approach um, uh, was was watered and and later grew and is continuing to grow.